your boy out sly. Got my nigga home base in this bitch. PC free. Yeah. Through all the pain and the struggle. One thing remains, I got faith all in my hustle. Through all the pain and the struggle. One thing remains, I got faith all in my hustle. I made some money in my hustle. I made some bitches in my hustle. I taught some cases in my hustle. I made my name in my hustle. I made some money in my hustle. I made some bitches in my hustle. I taught some cases in my hustle. I made my name in my hustle. Got my head up high. I'm smoking on that blunt. Brainstorm of sunshine. Here we go. I'm about that hustle. I'm about that action. Don't be fucking with my. Big shout out to El Sly for letting me use that music off the top to get me pumped up. Of course, El Sly is an international recording artist based right here out of Regina. You can check him out on SoundCloud, on Spotify, and the rest of those sites as well. My name is Big Red, and this is episode two of Big Red's Kitchen. Just want to start off by saying thank you so much for all of the support over the last week. You really made a big guy feel even bigger. Okay, so let's get to it. Today's offering are scallops. Now, scallops wrapped in bacon are pretty much on every menu um, across the city, if not that, across the country. And to be honest, it's kind of like the spray cheese of scallops. It's not the best preparation for this really beautiful, nuanced little scallop. So, what we're going to do today is we're actually going to go back hundreds of years, several century old dish called Coquille Saint-Jacques. All right, so Coquille Saint-Jacques. Now, Coquille generally just means shell in French, and Saint-Jacques is St. James or James the Great. He was pretty much one of Jesus' original homeboys. And then after Jesus died a couple times, he pretty much blew the pop stand that was Jerusalem and went back to Spain and then decided it was a good idea to start walking back and forth between Jerusalem and Spain. Till on the last time he saw some Virgin Mary apparition in the sand, decided he was going to go back to Jerusalem one last time and got his head cut off by a guy named Herod Agrippa who was essentially in charge around then. So when they were sending his, uh, his corpse back, or his body, I guess, they were sending it back to Santiago a Compostela, which is in Spain, which is where he was originally from. Now, on the way back, they hit a little bit of wind, some turbulence, or whatever you call it on the sea, and the boat sank. Now, the legend has it that his body survived without any damage or anything, and when it was Draw, dragged out of the sea that it was adorned in scallop shells. So that's why St. James is associated with the scallop shell. I've also heard another way that the story goes that he had a scallop shell that he took on his pilgrimages and he wouldn't accept any more food than he could fit in the scallop shell. So there's a bunch of different variations of the story, but scallop shells and St. James, and in French, Saint-Jacques, they go hand in hand. Now, that was a two-beer history lesson, probably. This is a three-beer cook. Probably would have been four or five, but I switched to tall boys. So, Big Red, you must be asking, are we doing a Spanish dish, because you're talking about Spain so much, or are we doing a French dish, because Coquille Saint-Jacques sounds very French. Well. We're going to do the French dish. I'm not sure if you knew this, but Catholicism, after the whole Jesus thing, really, or Christianity, I should say, really took off. And scallops are really farmed in a lot of places in the world, uh, including Canada. However, one place in particular where they're grown is Normandy. And Normandy is actually where my family comes from. And so I'm going to prepare today a version of Coquille Saint-Jacques, which would be found in Normandy um, and especially in little fishing villages like the ones that my family grew up in, uh, places like Hong Kong Maisie, where there's a scallop festival going on right now as we speak. 
So, the version of Coquille Saint-Jacques that I'm going to be preparing today is in a white wine and heavy cream sauce with garlic, shallots, and then it's going to be put into a shell, also a pot, I'm going to explain that in a second, and then we're going to be covering it in creamy mashed potatoes and just cover it in delicious Gruyere cheese. Gonna melt that bad boy and we're in for a treat. I promise you, this is a delicious dish. It's fire and, and restaurants charge an exorbitant amount for it if they serve it. But this dish is really, really nice because of its simplicity and the simplicity of the ingredients. So make sure that you buy good ingredients if you're gonna be cooking this because they really have to stand out in order to make this dish a success. All right, during that blur, I was over here and I was just preparing some mashed potatoes. So essentially what I did is I took two russet potatoes and I diced them up nice and small and threw them in some salted water. Uh, we're gonna use those for the mash, which is gonna be part of the topping for the Coquille Saint-Jacques. And uh, also what I've done is I've gotten the scallops ready. And so the way I get the scallops ready, it's really simple, not much to it. Um, obviously we're not in a hot bed of scallop beds here. Um, so these are imported and they have been frozen at some point. I actually bought these frozen. And so what I did is I took them out of the freezer this morning. Uh, then I put them in a bowl and there's all kinds of nice juices that go through those right out because that's disgusting. And so then what I did is I took them and I wrapped them in some kitchen paper and I give them a nice generous topping of sea salt to draw a little bit more moisture out and then just tap them, pat them down and uh, then you get a nice dry scallop here um, and, uh, and that's what you want because you don't want to cook them when they're wet. Uh, it just doesn't work out very well, especially if you're searing them. We're not in this dish, but if you're searing them, this is going to be life or death when it comes down to searing. And we're gonna do a searing video eventually, just not today. Um, I do sear a fantastic scallop. Um, and uh, of course, I'll, I'll pass that knowledge on as well. But we're gonna put these aside again for a little bit. Just wanted to show you. Also what I did is I prepared some shallots. Um, so shallots are um, a form of onion. They look like this in their non-processed form. Um, you could use onions for this dish. I would not recommend it. Onions are a lot more pungent. They have a lot more power to them and they could overwhelm the other ingredients in this dish, which is really not what you want at all. As we discussed before, this dish is all about the simplicity. So if you can find some shallots, and these are them chopped up, if you can find some shallots, uh, some shallots, must be two beer out of the four, um, get them because they will be the way to do it. They're also a very versatile ingredient. They work in a lot of dishes where onions um, might not work as well. All right, so the potatoes have cooked down enough where they are mashable. So I'm gonna need a colander. Of course, get that going. And I always like a little garlic. 
comes to my mash. And you can never have too much garlic in my mind. There we go. All right. Now, I'm just gonna mash these a little bit by spoon here. We're gonna do something here, which is something that really should make you worry because it's not how you should ever treat a mashed potato. Um, we're actually going to immersion blend the potato. Now, the reason you never want to do this in normal times is because it really reacts weirdly with the starch. So what happens is you get this glue-like texture, which is really unpleasant. In fact, if you know anyone that does this for Thanksgiving or anything, and this is what they're serving you, um, the only explanation I can think of is that they don't like you and they don't want you to come back because it's really not a nice mash. However, in this situation, often when people are cooking cookies Saint-Jacques in this form, what they do is they realize that the mashed potato will drop into the sauce prematurely and therefore just absolutely ruin uh, their entire presentation. So giving it a little bit of a zip with that immersion blender is going to be okay. It's going to give it that little bit of firmness that we need in order to make sure that that presentation is on point at the end of it all. Make a good mash. There's no doubt about that. We're not going buck wild. Just a little bit. Just zip it up a little bit, release some of that starch, and we're good to go. Right, so this can go aside. All right, now the fun part. What's gonna happen now is we are going to make this sauce. Now the sauce is obviously going to be what is good about this dish. We really need to nail the sauce and obviously cook the scallop perfectly. Now the scallop cooking part is a little unconventional. We're literally just going to heat it. We just want it to be cooked through slightly. We just want it to turn white. We don't want it to have any translucent pieces, but other than that, we don't want to cook it any more than that. And the way that we're going to do that in this is we're actually going to do um, some secondary heat and then also we're going to do some broiling at the end to make sure that that temperature in that mollusk gets all the way up there. So we'll be back. I just need to do a couple things. All right. So now close up of the pan means we're doing some saucy business. Now, do you even butter, bro? Lots of butter. Can't do anything French without butter. Now we're gonna add some of those shallots too. Now remember, I'm not a classically trained chef or anything like that. So are my knife is my knife work good? Absolutely not. Lots of people are actually brilliant at that stuff. We got different kinds of chops there. We're good. It's fine. All right. So we're letting this go. We got to let it nice and simmer up. We want that to kind of hang out. We want them to kind of get clear. They're going to do their thing. This is on about medium high heat, by the way, guys. Now, 
as this goes, we're going to do some nice, we're going to wait for all the butter to go, and now we're going to turn it down a little bit. This is a little obnoxious when it comes down to heat. We, under no circumstances, want anything to brown here. And the reason for that is, this is a white dish. If you get any kind of brown, except for on the very crust, it's not going to look good. A lot of people commented on the kitchen last episode, and it's much appreciated. Uh, the fact is, is that one of our burners is a little bit wonky and has a mind of its own. That's why you see me going crazy and having to stir this a little bit funny sometimes. Not every kitchen, including Big Red's kitchen, is perfect. Now we're gonna add a little bit of flour. And this flour is gonna be the base It's like a slurry, some people call it. Um, we call it a roux. And it's going to just thicken up the sauce so that we really have some good times going on. Now, it's getting hot. So, add more alcohol. So this wine, this is kind of funny actually, I think this was given to us by my good friend Sean um, for our uh, engagement party. Um, the name is Lieb Frau Milch, which in German means love or lovely woman milk. I don't know if he named it himself or he's recycling the bottles, but that's a genius name for a bottle of wine. All right, so we put little bit of wine in there. Now we're going to follow it up with some of the most delicious substance on earth, some heavy cream. Now I put one cup in there. It's only because I only have a small thing, so let's do another cup. More cream, the better. Of course, we should always be tasting. It's well on its way. Right now, it's not going to taste like much, like onion milk, I guess, kind of, um, with garlic. But, um, you're just looking for a good consistency because what's going to happen here is that once this gets into the nice thickness, we're going to throw some cheese in there and absolutely everything is made better with cheese. All right. So we've gotten that to a nice bubble. So, as you can see, it's very nice and thick and frothy, and that's exactly where we want it to be. Now we're gonna do two things right now. This is nice and hot. We're gonna start cooking the scallops now. And so, we're just gonna take them, and we're just plopping them in. No searing, no nothing. They've already been salted because that's how we got them going earlier. And we're just going to put them into that sauce so that the residual heat can start cooking away. I'm just going to turn that back to the heat slowly. Now, one other thing that we're going to chew, uh, do here is add our delicious Gruyere cheese. Now, there's two ways of doing this dish. You can do it with Gruyere or... Uh, you can also do it with the French version, which is Comte. Uh, I decided to go with uh, a 15-month aged Gruyere got, um, from, 
actually uh, Takeaway Gourmet, which is in the Cathedral District, great cheese shop locally. And uh, this is what I decided to go to. They also have Comte, which is the other kind of cheese, which is the French one. Um, don't tell my mom I went with a Swiss one, but yeah, I like it. We're going to take some. Probably, ooh, I don't know, nice healthy handful. And we're just going to put that there and fold it into the sauce. Now I alluded before that we were going to do it a little bit in shells as well as in a pot. And so what I meant by that is that we are going to use our little French onion soup bowls in order to serve this. Um, now the other way of serving this though is In scallop shells. So these are a little bit smaller. Uh, I got these at Safeway to be honest. I scooped out a shitty version of Coquille Saint-Jacques and stole the shells, uh, repurposed them so that I could make good one. That was a couple years ago. I haven't actually made the Coquille Saint-Jacques but it's what I served as, it's what I used to serve all my scallops in um, generally. So now mashed potatoes in a little pipe bag we just want to get them around like that we'll fix them afterwards if you have a normal piping bag then you're a more prepared chef than I am all right I know that doesn't look great but we're gonna make it look great by just fluffing it out to the ends like that. Now that we've got our little shapes, Back to our favorite, Gruyere. And at this point you might be saying, oh Red, this doesn't look very good. Well, there's a process. We will make this look delicious. You wait and see. All right, so at this point in time, your kitchen should start looking like the bomb went off and we're going to be doing the final piece of cooking on these items so in this we just took uh, the mashed potato put it on top and then Gruyere cheese on top on these you saw we forked the potato around and then put the greer on top here. So we're going to essentially cook this for 10 minutes and then we're going to broil it to finish it off, get a nice brown on it, and then it's plating time and we get to taste good times. We're looking good here, so now, even though the preparation looked a little bit messy, it's all about the final product. And the taste is there for sure. Now what we want to do is we want to just make sure that we get a nice crispy top on it. And by do, uh, the way that we do that is by broiling the actual tops. Let's get that cheese nice and melted. All right, well, we're ready to 
to take these out, make sure that you mid up on this one because it's going to be really, really warm. close-up, but Coquille Saint-Jacques are ready. You can see it's nice and hard on top. And then ooey gooey cheesy deliciousness. Well, that's it for yet another episode of Big Red's Kitchen. I hope you had fun. I know I sure did. See you next week, Tuesday. And it's One thing remains, I got faith all in my hustle. Do all the pain. And it's truck. One thing remains, I got faith all in my hustle. I made some money.